guys, so I got back from LA, I'm back in, it was actually not that bad, kind of sunny London, I had an amazing time to all of you who came to the meet up, thank you so much, I'm so grateful, I had the best evening, I think I cried like twice that night, I'm a very emotional person. Hi! What are your name? Elise. Diana. LA, so I thought I'd take two weeks off and use that as like a basis for me being a little guinea pig basically. But if you looked on my Insta, I have posted some workout videos. I literally went for like 10 minutes film the workout and the guys were like, wait what? And I was like, yeah, it's just this weird thing, don't worry about it. I did want to look at any physiological changes in my body that happen as a result of not training. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and if you do, I want to give you a big hug. Eesh. Thank you. Oh, right, let me just. <sighs> so, we're gonna talk about three things in this video muscle size and strength, fat gain, and third is gonna be just your general life and morale as a result of not training. Now, when I talk about not training, I'm talking about you just not doing your exercise workout. You're still going about day to day as you would. Life just gets in the way and it's not bed rest. Because if it's bed rest, the results are drastically different. Not like when I broke my arm and then two weeks later when I took it out of the sling, it was like... <sighs> Also, things will be different depending on who you are, so your genetics, gender, age, activity levels. But we're going to talk about the science generally, and you can have a think about how that might apply to you. So in terms of muscle atrophy, which is muscle wastage, so your muscles getting smaller, there's not a huge amount of research that is super conclusive. It's quite hard to study, and it's quite hard to get people that can live intuitively and adhere to the protocol. But there are two things that we do know in people who resistance train. So when you're resistance train you cause stress to your body and it can cause swelling and inflammation in your tendons joints and muscles and also when you're exercising you actually have a really big storage of glycogen which is just what your muscles use for energy and that glycogen holds on to about three to four molecules of water so when you're walking around and you're training you're living an active life when you see yourself in the mirror what you're seeing is your muscle and the added inflammation and some added glycogen storage and water retention in there too. So you build up this idea of what's normal for your muscles and you think that is my muscle size. And what happens when you stop training is that actually the inflammation is going to go down and also because you don't need that glycogen in your muscles, your glycogen levels are going to go down. So the water retention is going to go down and actually your perceived muscle size looks smaller but the actual amount of protein in your muscles is still the same. And then when you dehydrate them into raisins, like they shrivel up. It's kind of the same thing. The amount of fiber and carbohydrates and starch or whatever is in the raisin is still the same. It's just that you've squeezed a ton of water out of it so it looks a lot smaller. And that's what happens to your muscles. Glycogen and its associated water contributes to around 15 to 20% of the cross-sectional area of your muscle. Cross-sectional area is basically, let's just say you rip the bicep muscle out of my arm, cut it down perpendicularly, and then you've got like a circle, and it's that area that they're measuring. 15, 20%, that's a lot. Plus, you've got extra fluid buildup from the inflammation, so it's actually like a really decent chunk of perceived muscle size that you feel like you're losing, even though the actual muscle is still well intact. So when I was reading and researching and looking at papers to see what the rate of muscle atrophy was, there were quite a lot of studies that showed that in over two to three weeks there was a significant loss in muscle mass. But what they failed to control was water. When other scientists came and reviewed their papers, none of the water had been controlled for. And then when you look at the data that looks at water, it kind of matches what they thought was lost as muscle. So for example, I found a couple of studies that suggested that every single day you would lose about 0.1 to 0.2% of muscle size. But bear in mind that glycogen and water does account for about 15 to 20% of your muscle size 
and it fluctuates like really really quickly in response to training and detraining and I feel like those studies didn't really control for that enough and also inflammation takes a couple of days to change and go away again very hard to control for in terms of what I've seen I don't feel like there's enough conclusive evidence to suggest that there is much of a difference at all and my interpretation is within two to three weeks there really isn't much muscle loss. What you physically see as anything that's a loss is just a loss of water retention, a lower glycogen storage and less inflammation. I don't personally feel like much has happened to me. Obviously now I'm going to show you footage of just before I left on my holiday. So that's what I looked like back then. So I'm just giving you a little bit of a flex. what I look like now when I came back so maybe like a little bit flatter but really not that much difference this is something that I typically see because if I'm being honest with you guys I do this quite often where I will have to not train for one to two weeks and so I see these not so changes um, quite frequently I did lose a little bit of muscle I'll explain the science about why that's not so much of an issue in a set so we've talked about hypertrophy and muscle size now we're going to talk about strength for beginners what studies have shown is that within two to three weeks their one to three rep max can decrease by 10 to 20 percent but that strength can actually be regained really really quickly coaches will use that to their advantage because athletes will peak then they'll take a couple of weeks rest or light and then go back into training peak again and actually over the course of several months they're still hitting the same one to three rep maxes as someone who would train continuously. So your long-term trajectory is the same, you're just looking after your body a little bit better and giving a little bit more rest and also achieving some other things in life. Generally still the trajectory, I struggle so much to say that word. The trage looked just as good even though it's kind of going in waves and they were still progressing really well. And then in advanced strength athletes, so athletes that have been resistance training for four or five years plus, there were lots and lots of studies that suggested that actually if they stop training even up to three weeks they were able to maintain their strength and then after that strength started to decrease that was good news i feel like i'm kind of in that bucket so i'm going to test that theory to see whether i can still lift as much as i could lift two weeks ago backstory i was doing strength work about six months ago but i haven't really given it that much attention for the last six months my pb was 115 kilos i just translate that to pounds so i actually know what that is I don't want to try and lie to you. I haven't done strength work for a while. I retested it two weeks ago um, and I got to 100 kilos. So I have lost like a little bit of strength over those six months. But we're going to test to see how much strength I've lost now over these last two weeks specifically. the footage because I was like I want to see what the technique is like I didn't go as deep as I should probably because like the last two weeks I haven't really done any stretching either so it did feel a bit tight the weight felt okay just felt a little bit tight so if I was gonna give myself some critiques I'd say maybe go a little bit deeper but you know what I'm happy with that little bit of mobility stuff will iron that out do you like my sign my acting it out it's a bit like charades this morning isn't it because I feel like Maybe my speech isn't quite as eloquent, so I need to use more hand gestures. God. I'm just gonna go so British on you and just present you with our British weather. Take a look at this bad boy. He's wow. a cloud. The reason why, even if you lose some muscle mass, you can regain it really quickly is because of my nuclei. Most cells will have one nucleus. The nucleus basically is the command center of a cell. It contains lots of genetic information and helps with protein synthesis. So when you train, you can increase the number of nuclei in your cells and that contributes to muscle memory. It makes it easier, even if you lose a little bit of muscle, 
to regain it back really, really quickly. And the good thing is, there are studies that show that increased myonuclei can last in your muscles for up to 15 years. If you've been putting in some hard work, well, I just thought it worked, and then you need to take a little bit of time off, it hasn't gone to waste, I promise. You'll have increased your myonuclei, and it will just be easier for you to rebuild that muscle. I will say this, when you return to your first workout session, it may feel like hell. That's more of a temporary effect, and it's temporary for two reasons. The first is that your fitness does decrease quite quickly, your VO2 max can decrease quite quickly, and your cardiac output. So studies have shown that your time to exhaustion will be a lot shorter. So there'll be a perceived loss of muscle mass, an actual loss of glycogen in your muscles for energy for that workout, a slight loss in cardiovascular fitness, and all of that can combined can make it feel like you've taken a step back in your progress. But honestly, as soon as you start eating carbs, but within the next two to three workouts, you'll be back and bouncing and back to normal. What I will say, however, is if you under eat, you run the risk of your body using muscle for energy. So it's really important to listen to your body and not to cut calories drastically. And that takes us into the next section, which is fat gain. I think this is very dependent on how you live your life in that detraining period. Naturally, your body is really good at adjusting and it likes to act as a buffer. It really doesn't like drastic changes. What will cause you to gain fat is the combination of not training and over consuming. Short term overfeeding like one to two days won't really lead to much fat gain and there are studies that show that. It's usually if it's over a longer period of time like a week to 10 days, two weeks if you're consistently over consuming on food. If you do feel like maybe you've put on a little bit of fat, be aware that bloating does happen especially when we go away the foods are different so it might just be bloating and also one of the things to remember if you do want to go and enjoy yourself but you're a little bit nervous about fat gain even if you over consume on let's say 100 on 100,000 calories, whoa, I'm on 1,000 calories. It doesn't mean that 1,000 calories has gone into fat storage and that you need to offset that with the next day with like a 1,000 calorie run. What happens is that some of that energy will go into digestion, so your thermic effect of food will go up if you're looking at the total daily energy expenditure equation. Your non-exercise activity thermogenesis will go up, so if you've had a little bit more food, you might feel a little bit more fidgety. You just don't even notice it our bodies would just subconsciously expend a little bit more energy and our bodies don't absorb all the excess energy that's consumed I still stick to the same foods that I would normally eat but I'm just not eating the extra let's say 300 calories if that's how much I burn in a workout just because my body doesn't require that much energy and for me that happens quite intuitively but if you are someone that tracks then that just might be something to be aware of and something you can adjust if you had any concerns about fat gain. Even though your body might not require so much energy when you're not exercising, I do think it's really important not to overdo it and under consume because then, like I said before, your body might turn up to muscle for energy and you don't want that. You wanna keep your lean body mass nice and high so that your metabolism can stay nice and high. I mean, even if there is a little bit of fat gain, it's not the end of the world. The most important thing for me that I hope comes across in my videos is that life is so important so I tend not to stress too much about those kind of things. Now onto topic numero, oh, topic number three which is your mood and morale. I think there are so many benefits to not training like you just get a mental break. Sometimes even if you're not training it and you're using it for work you just need to prioritize that work and get something else done. Exercise puts you under a lot of strain and stress so the harder you train the more you're going to need time to rest. Like people think I train like six, seven, eight hours a week. Actually, I only train like three to four hours because when I train, I train super hard and then I just need that time off. And I also have lots of other things going on. And if you care about total health, then think about physical and mental. Like the mental side is just as important, if not more important than, um, oh, I don't know. I'm kind of like weighing them up, but I think mental is sometimes undervalued. So I think taking a rest period can be super helpful just to kind of restore like how you feel and also get some stuff done. Like when I had exams, I literally, I couldn't train. It just didn't work for me but I nailed my exams because that was my priority. And I think the thing that I took a little while to realize was that there were moments where I couldn't train and I couldn't train no matter what. So me worrying about whether I could train or not just added stress that I should have just 
ignored because if I just had time to de-stress, it would have actually made my training better because then I'd have gone back to training feeling well rested. Instead, rather than training, I was just spending that whole time feeling anxious and nervous and stressed and that wasn't helping me at all. In fact, it probably made it worse. So there are a lot of benefits to not training um, and I think if I'd have just spent some time uh, to actually acknowledge the fact that I wasn't training, I'm just gonna enjoy the time that I have off, would have actually made my training better. But you know, these are all things you see in hindsight. So physically, it's not so much of a bad thing. You don't really lose muscle that quickly. You don't really lose strength that quickly. Fat gain, again, unless you're over consuming the whole time for two weeks straight, you're not really gonna see much difference. And third, it can have a really positive impact on your mental health if you allow it to. That can then improve your training when you get back to it. So hopefully this video makes you feel at ease next time you have to take like a two week break. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a big thumbs up if you liked it and hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more. I love you and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.